Brothers was released in 1979, the story behind the scenes was almost as interesting as the film itself which is a huge cult classic. The production drew noisy crowds of onlookers for most of their shoots, no matter how late or cold it got. But the real trouble was the local gangs, of course. We're going back. Who threatened the crew and even sabotaged the equipment. But one real life gang got paid, as the producers paid a real gang 500 bucks a day to guard their trucks. I mean, that's as real as it gets. W.H. Stratton here with what happened, and for all you boppers out there, today we're talking about the cast of The Warriors, then and now. A lot of people get wasted in this film, and some of the cast members too are no longer with us. If you dig the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel, click the bell for notifications about new videos. And here's the inevitable. Viewers, come out to play, yay! And let us show you. What, what happened? happened? Roger Hill. One gang could run this city. One gang. Nothing would move without us allowing it to happen. We could tax the crime syndicates, the police, because we got the streets, suckers! Can you dig it? <laughs> Our story begins when Cyrus attempts to unite thousands of gang members against one common enemy, obviously the cops. Executive producer Frank Marshall claims that they hired a real gang member to play Cyrus, but then he suddenly disappeared before shooting. Actor Michael Beck denies the story and claims that Hill was always the first choice. After The Warriors, Hill appeared in the miniseries Leatherstocking Tales and played a recurring character on One Life to Live. In 2005, the actor sued Rockstar Games for using his name and likeness in the video game The Warriors without permission, but the lawsuit was dismissed. Hill died in 2014 at the age of 64, but his son Chris W. Hill also works in the business as an editor for all the Big Brother shows. Dorsey Wright. It's still on, and we're going. Cyrus sent an emissary this afternoon to make sure. Now Cyrus don't want anybody packed, and he don't want anybody flexing any muscle. So I gave him my word that the Warriors would uphold the truce. Dorsey played the Warriors leader who gets blamed for Cyrus's killing, and the Gramercy Park riffs swarm Cleon in the ensuing chaos. I want them all. I want all the warriors. The rest of the gang has to regroup after the escape. After the warriors, Dorsey appeared in Ragtime and the Hotel New Hampshire. He's been a TV actor and a second unit director. Dorsey reunited with the rest of the cast in 2015 for The Warrior's last subway ride home. It was a reunion video. Today he is 65 years old and works for New York Transit Authority and does voiceovers for TV and radio commercials. David Harris. David was already a working actor when he got cast as Cochise. And after the Warriors, he appeared in dozens of shows playing soldiers and cops, with a recurring role in NYPD Blue as Officer Donnie Simmons. Today he's in his early 60s and the last time we saw him act was as Uncle Bebop in a 2019 episode of The First Wives Club. Terry Mikos. Mikos got the part of Vermin after Tony Danza had to pass on the role to begin work on the TV show Taxi. And Vermin was supposed to be killed off by the Lizzies. But Mikos had made his character more comical and persuaded Walter Hill to spare his life in the shootout. After acting, Mikos kind of stayed in front of the camera. What are you talking about? I don't get it. As a news anchor and serving as a communications director for U.S. Congresswoman Nan Hayworth. Which the committee obviously feels Rivers didn't meet. Today, Mikos is 68 years old and he and his wife Carmen live in Poughkeepsie, New York with their four kids. Mikos is an active member of Faith Assembly of God Church and teaches public speaking courses. Brian Tyler. Snow was played by Brian Tyler and he's one of the few members who makes it back to Coney Island alive. Like everybody else, nine guys, no weapons. The Warriors was his film debut and he's also appeared in low budget films like Vamp Bikers and Vamp Bikers Dose. But that's it. He retired from acting and became a New York State Trooper until retiring in 2004. And we hope this 69 year old former actor is enjoying his retirement. 
Marcelino Sanchez. Everyone remembers Rembrandt, who was ordered to tag everything in sight. I want you to hit everything in sight. I want everybody to know the Warriors were there. Marcelino began acting in the 1970s, and Warriors was his third film. He went on to play roles in Chips and Hill Street Blues, but is most remembered for The Warriors as the odd man out when Cochise and Vermin were partying with the Lizzies. But Rembrandt is also the first to sound the alarm. The chicks are packed! The chicks are packed! No. Rembrandt wasn't into the Lizzies, and Marcelino wasn't either as he was openly gay in real life. And sadly, the actor died of AIDS in 1986 at a heartbreakingly young age of 28. Paul Greco. We were just at that big meeting up in the Bronx. We're going home to Coney. The train gets messed up by the fire and dumps us here. I don't know what you're talking about, man. How could this be a big meeting if the orphans wasn't there? Our warriors have their first encounter with the orphans who weren't on the Rift's guest list. Their leader is willing to negotiate, but then he gets jaded and all hell breaks loose. <laughs> After the warriors, Greco played numerous character parts in films and shows, including Martin Scorsese's controversial film The Last Temptation of Christ and The Cable Guy starring Jim Carrey vastly different films. His final film appearance was in 2003's The Miracle of Burn, as the actor died in 2008 at the age of 53. Thomas G. Waits. We are not gonna hide who we are just because some whore shakes our ass. Don't call me no whore. I ain't no whore. Fox was originally supposed to be Mercy's love interest, but the two actors reportedly had no chemistry on set. And the actor had zero chemistry with director Walter Hill too, who fired him after eight weeks of filming and had a cop throw his character in front of a train. The best way to get fired. Waits had his name removed from the credits, but he did reconcile with Hill and return for the 2015 reunion. The 67-year-old actor has had a fine career, including playing Windows in The Thing, and is good friends with actor and musician Tom Waits, as the two often get mistaken for the other. Deborah Van Valkenburg. Yeah, that's right, warriors. Just keep walking. Real tough mothers, ain't you? You guys don't show me much. Why don't you dickheads just walk all the way back home, huh? Before playing the feisty troublemaker Mercy, Deborah made her debut on Broadway in Hair and went on to play Jackie Rush on the hit sitcom Too Close for Comfort, enjoying five seasons as TV veteran Ted Knight's daughter. The 70 year old actress most recently appeared in four episodes of the 2020 Hulu show Hellstrom. Tom McKitterick. I can't make it! You sure? I can't I'm sure. Good. I'm sick of running from these whips. Tom was cast as Cowboy after Robert De Niro passed on the role. McKitterick did some stage acting for a few years before he moved on from acting to pursue photojournalism. He shot a lot of Grand Slam tennis matches in his career before returning to the theater as an off-Broadway producer. Lynn Thigpen. Thigpen's silky smooth voice narrates the film from the DJ booth. It's a special for the Warriors. Her subsequent acting career spanned three decades too, winning a Tony Award in 1997 for her appearance in An American Daughter. She also played an angry parent who butted heads with Morgan Freeman in Lean On Me. Thigpen has also earned four Emmy nominations as the voice of the Chief on the PBS kids show Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego. But sadly, Thigpen died in 2003 at the age of 54 while shooting Anger Management. It was released posthumously in her honor, and the talented actress has an elementary school named after her in her hometown in Illinois. James Remar. I'll shove that bat up your ass and turn you into a popsicle. The Warriors was the second film appearance for James Remar, who has had a fabulous career of playing villains and heavies. 
He reportedly earned his role when he lifted the large table where the producers were sitting to simulate his park bench bust during his audition. And the actor co-starred in the Showtime series Dexter, playing Dexter's adopted father and sole moral compass. And the actor dies as two separate characters in Django Unchained. Remar even re-teamed with director Quentin Tarantino as a character in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And he's currently filming Oppenheimer, scheduled for a 20 2023 release. Mercedes Rule After busting Ajax, Mercedes went on to win an Academy Award in 1991 for her performance as Anne in The Fisher King. More recently, Mercedes appeared in episodes of Power and Bull and will appear in The Nana Project, which is currently in pre-production and will be directed by legendary Mike Tyson and ex-wife Robin Givens. David Patrick Kelly Pint-sized character actor David Patrick Kelly is always a thorn in the hero's side. And after the Warriors, he went on to play villains in movies like Commando, Wild at Heart, and The Crow. He even re-teamed with director Walter Hill for 48 hours. Of course, playing another villain named Luther. Warriors, come out to play. The Warriors come out to play scene has become very, very, very iconic. And get this, it was also improvised. Walter Hill didn't like the way the scripted scene was turning out. And Kelly credits one of his own childhood bullies as the inspiration for this chant. Michael Beck. You Warriors are good. Real good. The best. Walter Hill discovered Michael Beck by accident when he was watching the film Madman to see a relatively unknown pre-alien Sigourney Weaver. So Hill asked Beck to come in for an audition, and the rest is history. Beck had a great career, starring in the box office flop Xanadu with pop star Olivia Newton-John. And he had a lengthy film career, even though he never got quite as leading of a role. In one interview, Beck kind of explains it all, saying, quote, The Warriors opened a lot of doors which Xanadu then closed. When we see the ocean, we figure we're home. We're safe. All right, playtime is over. The Warriors theatrical run was cut short because of violence at screenings, but it turned a profit and became a cult classic. President Reagan screened the Warriors at Camp David and even called Michael Beck personally to tell him how much he enjoyed it. And Entertainment Weekly ranked the Warriors number 16 in their list of top 50 cult films of all time. Be looking good, viewers, you hear me, babies? Real good. Be sure to leave a comment about who your favorite favorite warrior was? Whose career have you followed since? And is The Warriors a good movie or a bad movie? Or does it even matter? Let me know in the comments below. Please be sure to give us a thumbs up if you don't mind. Subscribe to the channel and come back often so we can keep telling you 